Coming up next, we uncover the story behind a classic hit that took shots at healthcare giants, uh, the banking industry, and corporate oppression. A proverbial middle finger aimed directly at the man, maybe the last great mainstream song to do so. This song even railed against the artificiality of celebrity decades before TikTok or Instagram. With the singer threatening to kick the butt of some of the hottest musical stars of the time, the front man of this group despised the flashy, superficial side of pop stardom. After just one hit song and one successful album, he walked away, disbanding the group because he couldn't fake it anymore. Uh, he headed to London to rediscover his passion. This is the story of an artist who captured bottle lightning only to become disillusioned by the very success he worked so hard for. Great stories coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you know what the numbers 33 and a third, 45 and 78 mean by heart, you're gonna dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now, click the big red button, and make sure to click the notification bell so you always know when our good stuff comes out. Also, man, I am so excited to announce our new merch provider. We partner with 80stees.com. I'm gonna start doing the t-shirt of the day. Today I've got Land of Confusion with the spitting image of Genesis. You can get it at the link below or the link right up here. You gotta check it out. If this one doesn't float your boat, there are thousands of some of the coolest t-shirts you'll ever see. Movies, bands, music, TV, everything. So it's time for another edition of our show, Bottle Lightning, where we celebrate a song that was king for a day or for many days. Uh, most people call these things one-hit wonders, but here we honor them as lightning in a bottle. So in the spring of 99, as Phantom Menace hype swept the nation. And as Y2K fears loomed large, the song You Get What You Give by the unknown band, well then unknown, New Radicals, was everywhere. Written by Greg Alexander, with music co-written by Alexander Rick Knowles. The central theme of You Get What You Give is, of course, about staying true to yourself and embracing freedom, even in a frustrating world where so much is out of our control. Great song. Greg Alexander, the mastermind behind New Radicals, grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, surrounded by a diverse group of friends and drawn to two music genres that really shaped his outlook, soul and rock and roll. Now, eventually his focus shifted to the guitar and drums, but the real turning point came when he snuck into an R-rated movie at the age of 13, a little movie called Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Seeing Prince was a game changer. Let's Go Crazy knocked me over, and when I heard the beautiful ones, that was it. I knew I was going to run away to California. It was what Greg would say. Greg's first trip to Los Angeles was technically a family visit with his mom under the guise of seeing his aunt. But in truth, it was what he now laughingly calls a covert research and development trip. He could already feel the lingering post-60s spirit in the mid-80s. And during his visit, he snuck into an open mic night and even managed to slip into the Grammys where he saw all of his heroes up close. But in that moment, everything felt possible. He knew exactly where he belonged. So that summer, uh, back home in Gross Point um, in Detroit, eastern suburb of Detroit, he made his intentions clear. He said, I told my parents I'm running away to California to be a rock star. His mom could tell that he was dead serious, but his dad, more pragmatic, said, well, make sure that you're back by September for school if it hasn't come together. That's pretty cool. Greg didn't want to be part of an organized religion. He didn't want to follow the same path as his schoolmates going to college and starting a career that he just didn't have any passion for. He was willing to throw it all away for rock and roll. Now, it wasn't just talk. Greg made it happen. I mean, by the age of 16, he had already signed a production deal with a and Records in Hollywood. Just three years later, in 1989, he released his debut solo album, Michigan Rain. Unfortunately, the timing was off. Uh, the album didn't find any audience, you know, partly due to a lack of promotion as the label was caught 
uh, during the takeover by Polygram Records. Undeterred, though, Alexander took another shot at stardom when he signed with Epic Records for his 1993 album, Intoxifornication. This is the truth. But the music scene had shifted by that time. Grunge was dominating the airwaves and Alexander's style didn't fit the mold at all. He said, I refused to sound like that because it just wasn't me. I couldn't fake that. I had to follow my heart creatively. So the album flopped, and once again, Greg found himself back at square one looking for yet another record deal. By the way, that was the second record deal. So searching for his third record deal, would the third one be the charm? It would indeed. Greg admitted that he was stunned when Michael Rosenblatt, the head of a and at MCA Records, wanted to sign him. Uh, this MCA record deal was incredible. The deal afforded him the budget and the artistic freedom that he'd always wished for. So he created a one-man band called New Radicals, and he put everything he had into the debut album, Maybe You've Been Brainwashed too, which was well ahead of its time. Uh, launched by the single, You Get What You Give. Greg shared that the inspiration for the song actually came from a dream. Uh, in this dream, he heard music drifting from the house next door. And uh, Greg was intrigued by what he was hearing, so he walked in and he discovered that the great Joni Mitchell was sitting in a room inside the house. Joni welcomed him with the words, have a seat. In a captivating twist, Joni would later express her admiration for You Get What You Give in real life, calling it one of her favorite songs. Now, at first listen, You Get What You Give feels really joyful. You know, it's catchy hooks, it's uplifting chorus. But then if you dig a little deeper, you find that Greg Alexander is tackling some really serious issues. He was taking shots at, at health insurance companies and corruption, calling them out with lines like health insurance ripoff line. Health insurance ripoff line. He also had something to say about the FDA, the hypocrisy behind the war on drugs, and of course, those big bankers on Wall Street. FDA, big bankers. Now, looking back, he admitted that weaving all that into a pop song was kind of naively crazy. It was a crazy idea, but it was a serious middle finger aimed directly at the man. Greg also revealed that he crafted a specific section of the song uh, kind of as a test to gauge whether the media would hone in on the significant political issues that were raised in the opening lines or if they would get sidetracked by the petty celebrity dissing. It was the spoken part uh, in the bridge of the song. Fashion shoots with Beck and Hanson, Courtney Love and Marilyn Manson. You're all fakes run to your mansions. Come around, we'll kick your ass in. Predictably, and you know, just as Greg suspected, the press quickly fixated on the name dropping, largely overlooking uh, the more pressing political themes he had intended to highlight and nothing's really changed since then. Uh, there is no getting around the controversy that the song's bridge would stir up. Now we'll get back to that one in a second and talk about that. But let's take some time to applaud the musical arrangement of this amazing song uh, that Greg produced and composed with Rick Nels. The intro to You Get What You Give has this really unique sound that just grabs your attention, it grabs your ear right from the beginning. It's all about layering different percussion instruments like a shaker, a tambourine, and some small hand instruments all played softly to create a gentle rattling effect. It totally captures, you know, that distorted, chaotic vibe of everyday life. Greg added some light reverb and did some careful mixing to make sure those subtle details on the percussion really bust out. And I gotta tell you, I love Greg's one, two, one, two, three, four count that punctuates the song's melody and really sets up the opening line perfectly. Wake up, kids. We got the dreamer's disease. Wake up, kids. We got the dreamer's disease. Now, the bass line in You Get What You Give, that was played by John Pierce. Really stands out. It has a you know a classic Motown feel, kind of like what Hall of Famer James Jamerson would have done on Marvin Gaye's classic What's Going On. It 
it's melodic and it's, it's smooth, adding this great sense of movement to the song while still serving as a you know solid backbone of the rhythm. It's one of those lines that not only ties everything together, but also pushes the track forward, just like James Jamerson's best stuff did. Now, in addition to lead vocals, you know, Greg Alexander played rhythm guitar. Paul McCartney's current guitarist, Rusty Anderson, played lead guitar. Rick Knowles performed the keyboard and the backing vocals, and Gary Ferguson was on drums. Juliet Prater executed the critical percussion parts, and Richie Podler provided an additional uh, uh, vocal arrangement on the recording that you can hear. Man, it didn't take long for the single You Get What You Give to rocket into the top 40 on the Billboard charts once it was released. And it's kind of a surreal moment for Greg Alexander. He tells the story that he's walking down Sunset Boulevard one day. This was right after the record had dropped. And as he strolled along the famous strip, the familiar sound of his song suddenly blasted from a passing car. For a split second, panic set in and he thought, oh no, someone stole my demo tape. And he was dead serious. And then just a minute later, he heard the song blaring from another vehicle. That's when the reality hit him. With a mix of disbelief and excitement, he couldn't help but wonder, how did all these people get my demo tape? It was a surreal experience watching his music come to life in the world around him. I love that. It's just like uh, in awe. Greg's hearkening on Sunset in 99 was no fluke, though. It was the beginning of an international takeover. You get what you give, it bursts onto the scene, you know, with this rebellious lyrics and its feel-good melody, and it captured hearts all over. The song soared to the top of the charts worldwide, reaching number one in Canada and New Zealand. It went to number four in Ireland, number six in Spain, number 13 in Australia, number five in Scotland, number five in the UK, number 36 here on the Billboard Hot 100. And it also went to number one on the adult contemporary charts here and number eight on the alternative songs chart. It was a true crossover song. I mean, it's infectious spirit made it an anthem of liberation across the globe, like I said. Well, let's go back to the part of the song that created uh, the storm in the media. Uh, the closing lyrics that rattle off the list of celebrities that need their asses kicked. I'll start with Beck and Hanson and most notably ending with Courtney Love and Marilyn Manson who's still a magnet for controversy all these years later. For the most part, the artists that Greg shouted out were cool with the lyrics. However, Marilyn Manson did threaten to crack Greg Alexander's skull open, uh, not because of the kick your ass line, but because he didn't like being mentioned next to Courtney Love in the same sentence. Courtney Love and Marilyn Manson. That's hilarious. Courtney Love reportedly considered you get what you give to be a great song, and she even publicly praised it, appreciating his positive message and uplifting nature. Beck once shared that when he bumped into Greg Alexander at the supermarket, uh, that he actually took the time to apologize for the line uh, that Beck and the others were all fakes, saying that it was never intended to be personal. And Beck called it a nice moment, and um, I always wonder why Beck was in there, because he's so awesome, but the Hanson brothers weren't bothered by the song either. Greg actually worked with Hanson five years after You Get What You Give It peaked. He also co-wrote the song Lost Without Each Other from their 2004 album Underneath with Greg. Zach Hanson actually described him as a bit of a character, but a really cool guy. So the new Radicals debut album, Maybe You've Been Brainwashed 2, was selling briskly. And You Get What You Give It turned into a global hit. Everything was on the up and up. It really looked like Greg Alexander was on the brink of something really big, something huge, something he could build an incredible career off of. He was on top of the world. And get this, the song was released in October of 98. It really caught on in early 99. He put a touring band together. He was on the road. He was also doing uh, the kind of radio station blitz that he loathed, but in April, uh, they were touring with the Goo Goo Dolls. And then just a few months later in June, just as the bittersweet ballad Someday We'll Know was set to drop as the album's second single, Riding High, Greg shocked his expanding fan base by disbanding the group and stepping away from it all. Someday we'll know if love can move a mountain. Someday. 
He issued a press release stating, and I quote, I lost interest in fronting a one hit wonder to the point that I was wearing a hat while performing so that people wouldn't see my lack of enthusiasm. Wow. This was just, like I said, as the second single was going out. He only agreed to shoot a video for the track and then he was done. The other thing he said in the press release is he confirmed the New Radicals would no longer be a recording, promoting, or uh, performing entity, and that he would be writing for other artists as the fatigue of traveling and getting three hours of sleep in a different hotel every night just to do boring hanging and schmoozing with radio and retail people was definitely not for him. Poof, there would be no more New Radicals going forward. Even Still You Get What You Give is still going strong. It's made its mark in several movies and TV series over the years, notably played during the end credits of the 2006 Adam Sandler film Click. It was featured in the season three finale of Glee in 2012. That's also been in Surf's Up, Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, and uh, the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. That's a big one. But after leaving New Radicals behind, Greg Alexander went to London, and he went to rejuvenate his love for composing. After a while, he came back to the U.S., and he shifted his focus to producing and songwriting, choosing to maintain a low profile in the industry. One of his biggest successes during the time was co-writing the Grammy Award-winning tune, The Game of Love, performed by Santana featuring Michelle Branch under the pseudonym Alexander. He also penned songs for artists like Sophie Ellis Baxter, uh, Ronan Keating, Mel C, Enrique Iglesias, and Maroon 5. Alexander was so far ahead of his time with this song, he even coined the oft-used word frenemies in this classic. You get what you give and Game of Love co-author Rick Knowles. He went on to collaborate on hit recordings for Madonna, Lana Del Rey, and Dido. You get what you give. Greg Alexander's innocent attempt to fight power, it was one of the last flashes of bottle lightning of the 20th century. In addition to its impact on the international airplane sales charts, the track has generated some enviable praise from a variety of iconic names in the music business. Actually, in the liner notes for a 2000 more compilation, Artist Choice, a Canadian songwriter and legend, Joni Mitchell, held You Get What You Give as a flower of hope that emerged from the swamp of McMusic. And fast forward to 2006 when Ice-T appeared on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. When asked about any non-rap music that impressed him recently, he simply replied, you get what you give. You yeah, only yeah. get what you give. Right, right, right. I used to rock that. I used right. to rock that. And additionally, U2's lead guitarist, The Edge, expressed his admiration in a Time interview. He said, you get what you give is the song that he felt most jealous of and that he would have loved to have written himself. I mean, the truth is, when the song first came out, I liked it, but I didn't really take it all in, you know? But over the last few years, it's hit me like a hammer. It's a song of empowerment. It's a song of freedom. It's a call to action. I mean, it's truly inspiring. Uh, to me, it is. In this divisive world of fakes and phonies, where evil has become the norm, uh, Greg's lyrics raise our spirits. I mean, just like when... Uh, we feel like the struggle might just swallow us up whole. When he says, don't let go, you got the music in you. What's real can't die. You only get what you give. Uh, truth is, he didn't need to release another song. Because after this truth bomb, he said all that needed to be said. It's the ultimate mic drop song of its time. I mean, this song, it still moves the soul. Created by an artist who in a world of fakes and phonies, gave the proverbial middle finger to the man and announced that he wasn't for sale. What a concept. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a comment about you get what you give 
One of the great songs of the 90s, in my opinion. Love the song. Love the energy of it. It's a song we need right now more than ever. Share your memories, your feelings, your thoughts on the lyrics. Do you think they'll ever release anything else? Make sure to get your t-shirt. Land of Confusion is kind of appropriate for the song that we were talking about. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. We would love to have you as part of our community. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.